parte 2 of the maintenance of my 1973 Steipuk Pinsgauer. So far we have uh, adjusted the valves, refurbished the carburetors, swapped the ignition system, relocated the ignition system. Um, am I missing something? Yeah, probably. Um, anyway, in this part, we're going to be changing the fluids uh, of everything. And I believe off the top of my head that there is 14 liters of oil of uh, different uh, various viscosities in this car. So we have engine oil, gearbox oil, transfer box oil, differential oil, and portal axle oil. Now, anything that is not in the engine is EP90, to keep it simple. And in the engine, it is of another viscosity. Um, so it's really very simple to maintain, although uh, there is a lot of oil in it. Without further ado, let's drain some fluid. I hope you like the smell of gearbox oil in the morning. So first of all, before draining the engine oil, I decided to go for this engine shampoo from Castrol, which is a new product uh, for me. In any case, I had never used it before. So I thought I'd give it a shot before trying it on customers' cars. And uh, so far, so good. The engine still runs and I'm quite happy about it. So the only thing that you have to do is to run the engine for 10 minutes on idle and, uh, and then drain the engine oil. It's as simple as that. Now, while I was looking for the sun plug, I found this exhaust leak, which I simply packed with uh, some exhaust wrapping material. Seems to have worked. Let's see if I kill the engine or what? Wow, okay. This looks like condensation up here, but okay. Ah, oh, it's pouring rain. And see what comes out. Oh God, okay. I don't think this has come out in a long, long while. Okay, that's not good. Really forty, maybe. Okay, well, lucky I got the tray on the floor. Oh god, it's flowing much more quickly than I expected. Lucky I have that tray on the floor. Wow, good god. And that looks awfully fluid too. See, so um, yeah. One tray is nice, but a doubless, doubless trays is even better. Look at that. It's all over the place. I'm going to have fun cleaning that up. Yeah, that was quite a pain. Now, changing the oil filter is pretty much self-explanatory. So I'm, I'm just going to shut up right now. Obviously, lubricate the rim with some fresh engine oil, as you do prior to installation, and tighten until the uh, grunt of approval, as it were. There we go. That's tight enough, not going anywhere. Next, fill up with some fresh engine oil. The, the correct viscosity is 15W40, uh, and I received this rather uh, annoying packaging. Uh, I received a box of 12 bottles, uh, of 12 one liter bottles, which was a little pain in the ass. But that's all they had at the shop, so I took it. Now, while the engine is running, I do bear in mind at all times that there is that fan spinning um, right under my kneecap. So um, all caution is being exercised while checking for leaks. 
check the uh, engine oil level and top it up as necessary as you would do with any other car, in fact. job done. Now moving on to the differentials, portals and so on and so forth, uh, it's always a good idea to first remove the uh, filler plug prior to removing the drain plug. You'd be surprised at how often uh, your filler plug might be seized. If you drain the oil and you can't open the filler plug then you're definitely uh, screwed to put things lightly. Removing the uh, filler screw also vents the, uh, the, the device and allows the old oil to flow out uh, uh, more easily. So there's the gearbox oil coming out. Moving on to the transfer case. Quite happy with the color of that one. And moving on to the rear differential. Now the diffs are very well thought out where you have the filler plug located at the top of the differential and the oil level control plug which is in uh, the lower location. So you fill it from the top until uh, your uh, gearbox oil flows out from the oil control uh, level and, um, and that's pretty much it. Okay, so finally got this motherfucker off. Now, uh, this is the control hole and this is the level. So filling the gearbox is a bit like filling the diffs, just fill the oil until you see the level at the oil level control. And uh, that's pretty much it. Now for the uh, transfer box, it's slightly different. There, there is no, uh, none of those fitments. You just have to make sure that the oil level arrives at the uh, oil filler plug pretty much. So just fill it up until it um, dribbles. There we go, like so. Then you're done. <sighs> now this intervention was definitely necessary. This tiny movement was translated into quite a wide lateral movement at the gear lever. Uh, so all that needed replacing is this uh, M12 uh, rose joint, uh, which costs I think something like 12 or 13 bucks peanuts, but look at the movement that you have there and that translates into lateral movement uh, Generating a huge amount of imprecision during shifting uh, It was hard to find on, gears off. and nearly impossible to find reverse So this is basically the new rose joint and I even got it a little boot so that I can fill it with grease and, uh, and not worry about it seizing up or anything. I did measure the distance of the uh, fitment prior to removal and, and um, fit it in pretty much the same way which seemed to be uh, sufficient. Yeah. Thorough testing and there we go. Moving on to the front, there's definitely a bit of play in that part of the linkage, which I haven't addressed yet as such. Mm. Ah, there's some stiffness in here. So dismantling this piece, you really, really have to pay attention uh, how the things are put together. It uh, took me a while to figure it out, to put it back together in the correct way. Uh, so really do pay attention. And this is just a matter of cleaning these parts right here and greasing them uh, once more. Now 
Now there is a, a repair kit which is available. Uh, at the time, I, I didn't think of buying one, so I just you know cleaned this fitment as it is and um, and greased it. But uh, you can replace it and gain a little more precision. Now that boot right there, I do still need to replace. Now that part is actually the one which avoids the inadvertent engagement of the reverse gear while you're moving forward, which does need adjusting. We will take care of that in a few moments. This is a bit of a pain in the ass to put back together. Uh, so you do need to, I devised some sort of a creative way to, um, to be able to put it back together efficiently. Now it did take me a while to get it right, if truth be told. Finally, I got it right this time. So you have to put this, the, uh, the retaining circlip on top of the spring and then the upper ball and then this whole device thing. That's the way to do it, damn it. Took me ages to figure that out. What a dumb ass. Okay, so there's still a little bit of play in there, which I can probably solve by fitting a new kit, I guess. But at least now it's greased and I have a positive feel about it, which is nice. So now I have to, as before, triple check that uh, there's no ab abutment here in first, third, or damn it, yeah, or fifth gears. There we go, it's fine. First, third, and fifth, and it's not touching just. So that'll do. Okay, and it's not touching laterally either. Now what we have to do is to, uh, before going to set, yeah, there's still a lot of play here. Um, to set the, uh, re the um, retaining pin, I have to set it in between first and reverse and go back under the car. One mil, which I don't have. After messing around with the settings a bit, uh, you know there is what they say in the book, and what happens in real life, I managed to find a good compromise. So here we go. First gear, second, third, fourth, and fifth and reverse. And I get this every single time, which is perfect. I greased my shaft and balls, but uh, there's still a bit of play down there. First, push down, reverse. I get it every time now. Good. Definitely worth doing. Fourth and fifth, there we go. Perfect. That really did make a world of difference. Now replacing the axle gaiters is something that would require the entire axles to be removed if it weren't for this uh, fitment. Now this was a downright pain in the ass. I did this when it was about four degrees centigrade outside. I was freezing my ass off and uh, I really actually hated this job, but it really needed doing most definitely. Oh great, sand. Right, well that one, that's what happens when you drive with something which is bus. That feeds the purpose. Things, f***ing things full of sand. Look at that. Mother f yeah. It's not supposed to be there, man. New one right here, there we go. All brand new, nothing clean. The idea with this is to yeah, I need to first put some put some paste in there. Yep, get this thing over. Like so. Now I left these in the boiler room so that they would soften up uh, even just a bit uh, to make things easier. But um, it didn't didn't really work. It was they were really stiff, and it's a downright pain in the butt to fit these things. I hope never to do it again. Oh yeah, I can see it oozing out from there. Can you? Yeah, 
There you go, it's oozing out from there just a bit. See this here, you don't want. You want to close this gap. So this is going to be quite a pain in the butt. See the gap right there? That's what you want to have. Yes, do a minimum. There we go, and that's what I want to see. Turn it a little more. You can see, beginning, beginning to ooze out, which is good. Okay, I like that, do the tighten. Yes. Push that inwards. There we go. Good, I think that's sealed. Sealed and good to go. Yes, motherfucker. Nice, 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 nice. Nice, this was easy. Lol. So oh, that one was full of water. And that one was full of sand. That one was not so bad. And this one has a bit of oil in it. Ah, the brakes. Something very interesting to have in any, any circumstances, especially in a car like this. Now these clearly need some attention and they still do by the way. Um, but yeah, so I tried every single trick in the book to uh, free the um, the little nuts there, the, the fitment, and they were just too resistive. So I um, got out the Stilson wrench. There you go. Don't f with me, man. So that took care of that. Now it's much easier to take the entire assembly off the car with the pedals uh, as a unit uh, instead of trying to fiddle around to, uh, to remove the master cylinder. So um, it involves removing the clutch master cylinder as well, uh, which can stay on its uh, fixture. And um, the whole assembly holds down by four bolts on the front bulkhead right there. So that's pretty much it. Just have to remove the um, the vacuum tube that goes comes from the engine, and that's pretty much it. Remove those four bolts, and out it comes. Found a bit more rust right there. So there it is. I still haven't identified the servo unit. Uh, sadly because the um, the diaphragm within is damaged and I would like to be able to find a repair kit so if you know this exact reference please let me know in the comment section I've looked everywhere and haven't found it so I can't find replacement parts for it uh, so please let me know if you do know about the, um, the reference now I did shoot the overhaul of this uh, master cylinder um, because I bought the repair kit uh, from the uh, original manufacturer, but it turns out that the, um, the master cylinder walls were not, uh, were very badly pitted in fact, and it does state in the manual that um, you can't own these, you're not allowed to do that. So I ended up uh, replacing it. The overhaul of this uh, twin circuit master cylinder is pretty much the same as any other that you'd find. So there we have a close look at the cylinder walls and there you can see the, the, you know, the extent of the pitting. Now you can really do nothing about that except replace the unit. So, well, here's how it's done 
anyway, if you uh, can save yours, I do have this extra uh, repair kit kicking about. So let me know in the comments if you if you need one. I can uh, I can send it over to you. I won't be using it because I replaced the master cylinder anyway. So you know, I might as well uh, make somebody happy with it. Now I did take the opportunity that the pedal box was on the bench to lubricate everything and adjust also the uh, the travel of the brake pedal. Now that is something that is uh, found in the uh, workshop manual, so I do strongly suggest that you get uh, that book if you own uh, Pinsgauer, whichever it is. Uh, these books are readily available and relatively cheap, so uh, if you have the right tools and you've got the book, then you'll be able to take care of it yourself. Now, bleeding the brakes is something essential as on any intervention uh, within the brake line system. And look at the, the color of that uh, old brake fluid. It's absolutely disgusting. The service of this is way, way overdue. So I'm just flushing out the old fluid until the new fluid comes through. Now this is a um, self-bleeding kit as it were uh, it's a tube with a little valve uh, a little one-way valve on the end of it and allows you to uh, bleed the brakes by yourself which is pretty cool well that's all we've got time for today i'm afraid uh, so i hope that you found this video interesting that it gave you a bit of insight of the uh, mechanical innards of this quirky little beast uh, next time we will we will be adjusting the brake drums now i did it last time and I know that the, uh, that one is dragging, so that's definitely no good. Also, I went back to the place where uh, I had that little mishap and, um, and I walked the place. I did take the pins gear, but I walked it and I found a, a really great trail that I would like to try. So maybe I'll uh, show it to you guys um, and you can come with me walking the trail uh, before even trying to test it. Now, definitely the tires are on their last treads and will need replacing before trying anything. I don't have a winch either, so self-recovery is not an option. Uh, so I need really to put all the, my chances uh, by my side. Now, I did lose a bit of confidence due to that little mishap, so um, it's going to take a bit of time to get, get in the driver's seat again and uh, trying some uh, interesting things. At any rate, thank you so much for watching. I do highly appreciate it. Thank you to my patrons who are making this possible. Warm welcome to all the latest viewers who have uh, decided to subscribe to my channel. Thank you all so much for that. Uh, it's much appreciated. And I will be catching you all in the next video. Peace out, everybody. Goodbye.